the Sevastopol. In high fleet, the Sevastopol is both a really good ship and it is a very bad ship. It has all of this fuel, enough so that it can have a range of 6,000 kilometers. But the thing is too damn big to maneuver and it is very slow and heavy. The Sevastopol has all of the guns, missiles, and armor to protect itself. But the time to repair this thing... Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I know a particular Tarhan that can definitely relate to this one. <laughs> and the Sevastopol has all of these search radars, LN systems, tracking devices, MRST devices, and all of this stuff that it needs to make sure it knows where its enemy is. But all of this stuff is too expensive. And finally, but not least, it is a vanilla ship. So yeah, we're going to have to do something about that. Which is why today I'm going to make my own flagship design that it should solve some of the problems that the Sevastopol has. And so, my fellow Tarhans, I'm Captain Beans, and I'm going to show you my flagship design, which is meant to be cheaper, faster, have more range, and also just not a vanilla ship. Yeah, that's about it. And here is my flagship design. And you might be thinking, what on earth is that? <laughs> and let me just show you. So this ship, I like to call it the Fastopel, because it's one of its main features is that it is a tad bit faster than the Sevastopol and it has a range of 10,000 kilometers. And also, this thing costs exactly 60,000 gold coins, which is actually roughly about half of the Sevastopol cost which makes this thing better in terms of cost. Now this thing has all of the sensors that it needs to detect anything and everything. And so you can see here up top, I have a MR700 radar, which is working full to the full extent, along with a jammer to jam any cruise missiles that are incoming. An ELINT system, of course, because you need one, and a tracking device, which allows uh, for missiles to be tracked, as well as some IRST thermal sensors. And, you know, one trick to having all of this stuff work to its full extent is just basically spacing it out, which is why this thing is just so wide. And so you can see this like yellow, these yellow cones, that each device has. And if anything gets in there, so let, me, so let me just show you as an example. So you can see that if anything gets into that yellow cone, it'll be obstructed. And so, for example, for the radar, if it's obstructed, the distance that the radar can work on will be significantly less. And so the solution to that problem is to just space all of this stuff out. Is that realistic? Hmm, let me think. I mean, we are flying gigantic aluminium ships that carry tons and tons of liquefied methane as fuel and are powered by rocket engines on a desert planet that is like, what, five times the size of the Earth? Yeah, that seems realistic to me. Yep, that, that's about right. And of course, the biggest feature of this ship is the gigantic fuel tank that you can see here, which allows it to travel 10,000 kilometers maximum, which is basically like halfway to Hiva if, if you actually measure it. And yeah, because of all of these thrusters, 
it travels faster than the Sevastopol, which is one of the few things why I don't like the Sevastopol, is that it's quite slow on the tactical map. Now, this is not so much faster, which is why I decided to name this thing the Fastopol and not Speedopol. You know what I mean? So, this is only a tad bit faster than the Sevastopol, but the biggest advantage to the Sevastopol is that this thing has a much larger range. And so, yeah. And this thing is also cheaper than the Sevastopol. So, yeah, that's very nice. Now, of course, I'm not saying this is the best flagship design that ever in high fleet i'm just saying that this is my design and i kind of like it now this design does not have any sort of weapons or any sort of guns missiles or anything like that because those things are expensive of course and that's actually kind of the whole beauty of this design this thing is not meant to go into direct combat and is not meant to face cruise missiles now this thing does not have any armor which makes this thing extremely vulnerable to fire which i mean that's true the sevastopol d can survive quite a beating this thing cannot but that's actually not such a bad thing because if this thing faces a cruise missile or an airstrike and this quite exposed bridge gets destroyed let's just say that you don't have to worry about repair time on this thing anymore <laughs> now this is not the only version of this design that, that i actually have i also have several other designs but this is this would be my should i say final or my final design now this design right here is actually a little bit different because this one has a bunch of missiles at the very bottom of this ship installed into it. So you can see here, there are miss there's a missile silo which has A100N missiles and KH-15N missiles. And if you're wondering why I installed the nuclear versions of missiles and not just your regular missiles that would be hella cheaper, well then, my very curious Starhan, you shall find out within the next few-ish videos. Just stay tuned and you'll find out why. Now, building this thing is actually kind of easy. What you, what you need is just to build this big fuel tank, which is made up of uh, 30, 30 TC400 fuel tanks, just like this, and then just build a hull around it along with you know your thrusters landing gear bridge generators and build the towers for the sensors and also put the IRST on both sides because I actually have not really figured out how to put just one of them and that's actually about it that's how you actually build this thing it's actually I don't think it's very hard to figure out how to build it but what is hard to figure out is how to make this thing into a flagship let me explain to you what i mean by that so you can see right here we have the sevastopol in the ship selection menu already put into the fleet automatically now notice how next to the name it has a little star on it that means that this ship is a flagship and whenever you assemble a fleet you actually have to have at least one flagship in order to start the campaign but um, you can see all of my designs here they do not have the star on them and not even my missile carrying Fastopol has the star on it and so I'm going to show you how to put that star onto the name of the ship, which would make it the flagship. And for this, you actually have to get out of the game. And so, yeah, let me just show you. 
Okay, so in order to make a ship a flagship, you need to get into the game files, which you exit the game, and then you need to head into um, Steam, wherever it is on your PC, then head into the folder Steam Apps, and then into the folder Common, and then find the High Fleet folder, which when you open this, it should look something like this right here. And so the next thing you need to do is click on the ships folder. And over here, you will have all of your ship designs that you have designed in the shipbuilding menu. And you can see I actually have quite a lot of them. But just as an example, I'm just going to click one of my Fastopal designs. And so open them in Notepad, just as such. And you should have all of this stuff, which is like coding and everything. And so here's the next thing that you, you'll need to do. Uh, you'll need to find where the name of the ship is located. And the way you can do this easily is just uh, click Control F. And this is, this is a find thing. So what you need to find is ship underscore name using this function. And so right here, you will find the name of the ship. So you can see M underscore ship underscore name equals Fastopel 2.1. Now, make a space beneath it and type M underscore flagship all in, all in small letters. No need to capitalize anything equals, whoops equals true and that's it that's all you need to do and then of course save the file and that is it that's all you need to do to make your ship a flagship and so once you've done that just go back into the ship selecting menu and your ship design should have the star icon and should be a flagship and so yeah that's it that's how you make your ship a flagship. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, comment. And that's it, my fellow Tarhans. Thank you for watching.